do you feel like going back to Daytona, which you're about to do, you're going back differently now that you've written this book than you have for the previous uh, nine, ten years? Well, I don't know. You know, Daytona is always, and, and, and the book tells this story, Daytona is always a place where, where everything seems right to me anyway, mm -hmm. despite what happened in 2001, despite what happened with our team in 2007, uh, despite the disappointments that I've had there, I just love it. I mean, I describe in the book as a 12, 10, 12 year old kid looking at those bank turns, and I would rather have been looking at those asphalt turns in a Playboy book when I was 12. You know, that says a lot. Those those turns, like they, they yeah. Just do you still feel it. that way? Though? That's well, the I mean, fifty-fifty. I mean, yeah, I like, you can get both these days. Um, <laughs> I like both. I don't have to choose anymore. So, but but seriously, they they just they just made they gave me desire. They made me want to be a part of it. They wanted me to be up there on them, and so um, they defined me. And and for some reason, like when we went back to Daytona in July of that year, um, I had I got my career back. I right. said I'm not. I might not be happy personally. But I'm not going to let my racing suffer. I'm going to go down there and grab back what, what I lost in February. And, and that was, to me, that's, that was a cool part of the return. And it's been that way ever since. Mm -hmm. I always look forward to going. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the, the race itself. Uh, because it's, I think, hard for a modern-day NASCAR fan to understand just how radical your strategy was in 2001 when Dale said, let's work together. That seems like old hat now, but yeah, can you help, us, right. help put yeah. that in perspective? Well, I think that just tells you how far ahead of the curve Dale Earnhardt was. He won Talladega, member in 2000. That was the only race that, that had been run with the aerodynamic rules, the, the wicker thing on the back spoiler, right. and then the, the piece of aluminum across the, the roof of the car to, to dirty up the air so cars could close real quickly. The, the race at Talladega um, prior to the 2001 500 was the first race. It was like a trial, see how this works. People loved it, the action was crazy. Dale raced from 18th right. to first in the last two or three laps. And that was his final win. If that I'm was not his mistaken. last win, but it yeah. was his coolest win. You know, right, he's like, right. how do you exactly. win this race? He's 18th, and then all of a sudden he's in victory lane. So he understood it. He knew exactly what it was going to take to win that race. And you know, I think he had an idea about what it would be like in the 500 um, going to Daytona. But then after the 150s on Thursday, he said, I got this. I know what we got to do to win the race. Mm -hmm. And that is work together. And the crazy thing was he said, me, you, and Dell Jr., we're going to work together and we're going to win this darn race. And I thought, you know, I walked out of the meeting and I'm, I'm admittedly not that smart. <laughs> and it was an impromptu meeting. I was just walking through the motor on home lot right. and he grabbed me. And, uh, and, and I walked out of that meeting and I thought, there's 43 cars. We're one of, we're three of 43 cars. How, how are we supposed to get to the, how are we supposed right. to work together? I mean, it sounded great, but it seemed a little bit um, presumptuous that, that. Right, somehow us, three cars together yeah. at the front at the end. And then they had a red flag with 30 to go, and we come to a stop, and I'm leading the race. I hadn't really seen a whole lot of Dale or Dale Jr. Like, we'd just been racing our own way trying to get to the end. And I stop at that red flag and look in the mirror, and right behind me is, is Dale and Dale Jr. And, and you're talking down. about a moment for me. I'm like, I tell you what I thought first, and and I and I talk about this in the book. I was, I looked in that mirror and I saw that, and I thought, no wonder you ain't never won a damn race. You know, yeah. you don't you don't know what Dale Earnhardt knows. He he knew this was going to happen. How does he know that? And, and no wonder you haven't won. But then it became um, obvious uh, to even me that okay, there's only about 15 of us left. Right, And the three of us can indeed work together and we can win this race. And our plan when we talked about it on Thursday was, or Friday, excuse me, was whoever got to the front, the other two line up and fight. But looking back and watching the race, there's a, there's a point in time when we're coming around the second turn and, and Dale's up here and, and he had a run and he just sort of fell back. And then he, he, he wound up, like I had fought my way to the front, like I was leading, and Dale right. Jr. was behind me. And, and I did it without Dale pushing me there. We just circumstantially, that's how it worked out. Right. Mm -hmm. But then he chose to be that third guy. And, and um, after nine years, I finally watched that race uh, this, this spring, getting ready to write the book. And, right. and it told me so much about that day because he said, I don't believe either one of those two are do this. good enough, probably. <laughs> I know they ain't smart enough to, to be the guy to fight back here. I need right. to be that guy. And, um, you know, people say, and it hurts, people say to me, they'll be like, you know, Dale Earnhardt died blocking for you. Well, 
that's a that's unfair. First of all, um, he was blocking for me and Dale Jr. So let's let's at least let's at least know that both of us were involved in this. And then secondarily, the <clears throat> the race was won when we went into turn right. three, and Dale was in the middle of that three wide. Anybody that knows plate racing and is a racer can see there's no way. I mean, we've got this baby won. Right. I'm going off turn four. No more blocking Dale was Jr. necessary at that. He point. didn't. He wasn't blocking for us in turn three when he crashed. He was just saying, "I'm gonna. This is gonna be one, two, three, and you guys are trying to screw this up." And I'm. I'm getting third at least. Right. And then I know he's either thinking that or he's also thinking if I can just get in front of Sterling. Maybe I can make a run up there and pass them both. Right, you that'll know? be the one. <laughs> and I'll be the one that won, one of the three. But <laughs> Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com.